Julian Assange and personal freedom. Um, I thought this was resolved with the Pentagon Papers case. You bring it up in your article. I do not understand how Julian Assange can be facing all the charges he's uh, being he's being extradited. I guess Britain finally decided um, after they got him out of the Ecuadorian embassy that they're going to give him to us for prosecution. He didn't steal the documents, did he? He, no, he did not. He he received stolen documents and published them, just as Daniel Ellsberg, when he stole the documents, gave them to the New York Times and the Washington Post, which received them and published them. In that era, the Nixon administration got an order restraining the publication. Within a week, the Supreme Court lifted the order and issued the Pentagon Papers' opinion, which is an expansion of First Amendment rights, which rules that the public's right to know what the government has done is so profound, so integral to the values of our country that it doesn't matter if the materials were stolen or not. If they are of a material interest to the public, the publisher is immune from civil and criminal liability by publishing them. Uh, Brian, that's the Pentagon Papers case. It sounds like it's the Assange case. The facts are nearly identical. 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 In both, cases, in both cases, the thieves were uh, prosecuted. In the Ellsberg case, the prosecution was aborted because the, uh, the FBI ra- famously, if you remember this, you were a child at the time, famously raided Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office to get information about what he told the shrink. When the federal judge found that out, he threw the case out. In the case of Bradley Manning, who stole the documents that went to WikiLeaks and Assange, He was partially convicted, partially pleaded guilty, sentenced to 35 years in jail. You can't make this up. Had a sex change operation while he was in a military prison, came out as a woman because the president commuted his sentence. When President Obama commuted the sentence of Bradley Edward Manning, now Chelsea Elizabeth Manning, it was three days before Donald Trump was inaugurated. Trump ranted and railed so much against Obama for commuting the sentence and Manning for his espionage, and he was guilty of espionage, that the Justice Department under Jeff Sessions interpreted this as a signal to indict Assange, forgetting all about the Pentagon Papers case. So we'll see where this goes. I I think the appeals court in either London, their highest court, which hasn't heard the case yet, or the European Court of Human Rights will block the expert extradition. Why? Because Assange's lawyers have accused the CIA of a plot to murder him, and the CIA has not denied it. Oh my! If, if that if that evidence is is credible, the Brits will not extradite him, no matter how badly the uh, Justice Department wants him. In the meantime, he's been in solitary confinement. Uh, for four years in a Victorian era, horrific prison, the British version of Florence, Colorado, which is a slow, slow, slow death of Julian Assange. If he doesn't get out soon, he won't even make it. You've raised an interesting layer to this that I was not aware. The idea, not denied, that the CIA wants to kill him the cat's out of the bag. The genie's out of the bottle. Pandora's box has been opened. The papers were right. released. They were published. Is this just a, an act of revenge, or does he have more it's, information? No, it's it's an act of revenge, and in the minds of the Intelligence Committee, an act of deterrence to others. Look, these things only happen once in every generation, or at least of this magnitude. <laughs> the Pentagon Papers was 1971. The Assange release was in uh, 2010. What's interesting, uh, Brian, Pentagon Papers, who was embarrassed? LBJ. Who did the prosecuting? Nixon. Assange, who was embarrassed? George W. Bush. W. Bush. Who's doing the prosecuting? Donald Trump and Joe Biden. It's, it's government protecting government. Even though these people, Nixon, LBJ, Trump, uh, Bush, Biden, they can't stand each other, they're still willing to, to stand up for the government. Look, if, if, if you think I'm making this up or exaggerating, A judge in London found that the plot to kill him was credible. And she, the one who heard the extradition hearing, denied extradition on the grounds that he would be killed in the US. 
since that ruling was overturned, Assange's lawyers have found more evidence of the same plot. Oh my. Well, now, do we just take for granted, Brian, that the CIA can kill people? Aren't they bound by the same laws as the rest of us? Who the hell is the CIA to kill this guy? That's murder. Yeah, and, and going back to your deterrence, and I understand the idea that it might act as a deterrence, but the person who was supposed to be the uh, the poster child for deterrence was to serve 35 years in military prison, uh, Manning. Uh, Correct. That's the result. That's the deterrence. The person who steals the information, breaks the law, commits espionage, that's the person that's supposed to serve the time and be held out as the ultimate deterrent. You do it, you're going to be locked up in big boy prison for 35 years. They let him out. Now I'm going to tell you something that I've never revealed uh, publicly. President Trump called me to ask me about a series of pardons. And I came, if you could see my fingers, I'm holding them about a quarter of an inch apart. That close to talking him into pardoning Julian Assange. And I think somebody on the phone call, because when the president calls you, there's like 15 people listening. As soon as he hung up, talked him out of it. But you had the New York, or he had that New York Times case to hold up and say, yes, this I, 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 explained, I explained that case to him. He told me he couldn't stand Ellsberg. He couldn't stand LBJ. He was glad that stuff was exposed. He understood the law. He understood the Supreme Court uh, opinion. But somebody in the deep state who works for him and was either in the Oval Office or on the call, when the call was over, changed his mind. Look, I mean, th th this is just a conversation with the president. This is of no legal or historical uh, moment. I, I think if they do extradite him, the case will be uh, thrown out. But he he's undergoing a, a bizarre form of uh, torture in this sure. co solitary confinement closet in a basement that they've locked him up in. He's innocent until proven guilty, and they're treating him worse than they treat convicted murderers. Yeah, and that's the case more and more every day in this country, for sure. Yes. Wow. Shocking. Shocking. Uh, well, I hope he, I, I, I hope it is dismissed for, uh, you know, because there's a Supreme Court precedent on the books, which says he did nothing illegal. Uh, but then again, there's always the idea that they will kill him anyway, I suppose. Right. Jeez, please. Uh, real quick here. I, I, I don't want to catch you off guard, but I am excited for the outcome, and I'm hopeful for the outcome. I wanted to see if you were also hopeful that it would go the direction that you and I wish. The West Virginia versus Environmental Protection Agency case, which uh, the EPA just runs roughshod over everybody. It writes new rules and regulations. It has the effect of law. Congress is not governing what they write. This one has the effect of limiting the scope and power of federal agencies to do something that's way outside of the purview of the statutes that were enacted that allow them to write the regulations. Do you think this is going to go our way, Your Honor? I do. I do. You will know immediately if, if the author is Justice Gorsuch, uh, because he, he leads a merry band of three uh, justices, all Trump appointees, by the way, who, uh, this, and this is not a view shared by mainstream Republicans. This is a view shared by constitutionalists and libertarians of which Justice Neil Gorsuch uh, is, is the chief, um, that the administrative state, the whole administrative state, the EPA, the FDA, the FCC, all these entities that are neither fish nor fowl, they're not in the executive branch, they're not in the legislative branch, they're not in the constitution. They write rules, they enforce the rules, and they punish people that break the rules. All that is unconstitutional. And this is the beginning of the march back of that. It's not going to wipe the administrative state out, but it's going to push it back considerably. Well, Couldn't agree with you more. I, I had a conversation with the legal expert from Breitbart earlier in the program. And, and as we ended the conversation, I was going to do the same thing. Now all we need to do is get him to overturn Wickard versus Filburn, and we'll all be able to go on our merry way and so, live I'm a life. I'm holding my fingers up again. Justice Scalia told me they were that close to overturning Wickard versus Filburn in the Affordable Care Act case when John Roberts, the Chief Justice, changed his mind on a Wednesday evening when the case was due to come out on a Friday. The majority opinion became the dissent. The dissent became the majority. Wicked versus Filburn survived. Well, we don't need to dive in for the listeners what Wicked versus Filburn is, but bottom line is it allows it's the federal government. It's one of the, government. the, dozen. It's one of the, one of the, the 12 worst, worst opinions ever decided by the court. Ever.
ever decided. Judge yes, Napolitano. Justice Clarence Thomas would say it was so bad it would let Congress regulate a Tupperware party. Yeah, exactly. Because the Tupperware yeah. came from across state lines. That's all it takes. Yeah. 